My name is Hussein, Hussein Ahmadi. I'm originally, I'm half Iranian, half Kurdish. And uh, back in 2015, I had to leave the home because I wasn't safe. Um, so my mother sent me away to be safe. And back in then, you know, I was young, so I didn't know where she's gonna send me. I, I had no clue. You know, I thought they, they gonna, you know, she's gonna send me somewhere like, let's say, let's say Leeds to Bradford, you know, it's a different city. So I didn't know, she, was, she, she passed me to my uncle and my uncle passed me to a smuggler. So all of a sudden I ended up in the back of the car and the back of the truck for a few days. And then after a week, 10 days, I've, I found out I'm in France. So, and then from there on, they would try to smuggle me to the UK every day. Every day I was trying, every single day. and. I, I, it was hard for me because obviously at the, at the same, I was I, in the one point I was thinking about home. I didn't know what's going on because I didn't have any phone, I didn't have any contact, so I had you know I had no clue what's happening back in home, and I was scared because the last time I've seen my mother and my brother who been taken away by the government, it was back in 2015. So you know I, I, it was hard for me to live somewhere that you know I, I don't you know it was in the jungle, it was in the tent. I wasn't feeling safe and I had nobody by my side. I was by myself. Um, but then I had to survive it. Like I had no choice. I had no choice. And I was there, believe it or not, I was there for 10, 10, 10 11 months. I was in the jungle in France, in Dunkirk. Uh, even now when I think about it, I, I can't believe it. What, how did I stay that long? Obviously I had no choice because I, I did try to stay. I. But then I got beaten up to death by the smugglers. So if you look at my, there's a scar in my eyebrow because uh, once they came, they tried to stop me because just because I wanted to stay because I was tired, you know. Like, like every night I was trying, and then I was getting caught by a police, by security. And then they even they, they knew my name. They were like, Jose, no chance. Come back tomorrow. Like they knew everything. And I'm like, can you just let me go? Like pretend I'm not here. Just yeah, no, we cannot do that. So that, like. They couldn't do that, and then they, they, like they knew me. They were like, and and it was hard for me because I was seeing people coming to the jungle and then staying for a week. I was meeting them like they would come. They were fresh. I was meeting them. I was like sometimes I was helping them to build a tent, and then after a week, they're gone. They made it to the UK, and I was still there. So I was there like for 10, 11 months, and I was kind of giving, giving. I was giving up. You know, I was like, I don't think you know my you know my luck is here. Uh, so I, I was trying to stay, but then I couldn't. I was scared. I had to listen to smugglers. So you know, after ten months, eleven months, there was a. It was a night we we tried, and honestly, I probably was my last night because I was like literally giving up. We tried, and then they put me in a freezer truck. It was minus eighteen to twenty degrees. It was like frozen chicken and frozen uh, fries. Um, they put me in, and thirteen others. 12 or 13, can't really remember this. But we came in, and that was the first, first one we went in. And then as soon as I went in, there was all like smoke, like frozen smoke, you know. And I said after like 10, 20 minutes, obviously because the driver doesn't know you're inside. So after 20 minutes, I start to like kind of shake cold. I was really cold, I was praying to God like, okay, you know what? I hope the driver wakes up and knows we're inside and open the door and say, go back to the jungle. But after like, I don't know, after a few hours, I heard he, he turned the engine on and then he drove off. He w I was a bit happy but cold but sad at the same time. And then at that point, I was hoping it would go in the right direction because sometimes they put you in, like I've been, the, I've been to the situation that put me in a truck, he ended up in France, in, in Paris, ended up in, in Spain. And then all the way you had to walk back, like I've ended up in them places. So, because they don't know where it's gonna go, they just guess. Like, oh, you know, this is guaranteed. Get in. So they they put me in, and the you know they they put the engine on, the drive the driver drove, and then I was like happy, okay, it's going. But then my next thought was, is it gonna go to the right direction, or is it gonna go to Paris, in up or in Germany or somewhere? But then he went to the right direction, and I was I was happy, but then at the same time I was freezing. I, I mean, I was freezing to death. Um, fast forward, for fast forward, and then he went to the uh, 
the control control border. It went through, through the first one, it went through the second one, and then the third one was British uh, control. And then they stopped. They opened the truck, and I was happy. Not gonna lie, because I was so cold. Uh, but the thing is, I couldn't make noise because if I could, if I would have made, made noise, and then the driver knows we're inside, and we back, we're going back to the jungle, the swagger would kill me because everybody will say we got caught because of him. He made noise or he did that. I mean, we weren't even allowed to pee in the back of the truck. We had to have a bottle in our hand because if you pee, they think the dog's gonna smell it. And then because of you, you risk everybody. You know, it, it was bad. So I was scared. I was crying, and then. He went to the third control, the, I heard noises, the truck stopped, and then I heard this, they opened the truck, and I was 